Hello, 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 and welcome back to the channel. The name is Chev, also known as the Furious Chicken, and I am so glad you're back because this is the third part of our trilogy of videos about buying gold foil commons instead of regular foils. And I hope you have seen the other two videos because they cover uh, the water, earth, fire, and neutral um groups of cards the next ones that i will be covering is um life and death which are my two favorite splinters actually and i have a lot of things to talk about them now before we proceed i just want to let you know that these cards that i have right now are valued valued during the time that i'm recording this video and that will be the 31st of july so if there were any changes when you decide to buy these gold foils right now, I am so sorry. Uh, most likely some people has um, checked out the previous two videos and started buying their own gold foils. Okay, but uh, yeah, that, that is it, that's it actually. Now, um, before I proceed, I just want to let you know that, man, I'm looking at all of these numbers, I, I really am starting to regret buying <laughs> regular foils because I just completed buying my regular foil cards when some of you guys um, requested for me to create a video about gold foil versions and that is when I realized that gold foil versions are some of them are even much cheaper than the regular versions and even if they are much they are a bit more expensive you only have to spend like an additional 10 cents 20 cents 30 cents 40 cents at most that's not a lot especially when you think about the uh, um, the benefit of getting 10% per card, per gold foil card, okay? We're talking about gold foil commons here. And like what we talked last time, if you haven't, um, you know, and if you're not aware yet, the reward share percentage bonus that you get per gold foil is the same for a gold foil, foil common and a gold foil legendary. It's 10%. You're basically only paying for power if you want if you are buying your gold foil epics and gold foil legendaries or even gold foil summoners because um, you have to spend a lot more even hundreds of dollars to get those cards where while you only have to spend a few cents to buy a gold foil common and this time what I will be showing you by the end of this video you will learn which cards you should be buying um, for the modern silver league because i play silver all the time for my main account how much each card per bcx as well what level you should be buying them at and what the difference is if you will be saving money or you would have to spend a bit more if you're converting your cards from regular versions to gold foil ones okay all right let's proceed so we're gonna talk about the death team first and we're gonna use peak monsters of course because peak monsters is just awesome i don't even know if uh, how I can play Splinter Lands without peak monsters. First one is Pelicor Deceiver, and to be honest with you, my friend, I'm not really the biggest fan of Pelicor Deceiver. I think it would be awesome in the gold leagues because it gets that backfire ability, but in the silver league, you might just need it for one specific thing, and that is the um, the earthquake rule set because it has the flying ability. The good thing about it is that it you get a gold foil version of a card at level three right away. That's the minimum. Unlike a regular foil where you have to have you have to buy 14 copies to level up to level three, right? And that's actually the reason why even though you see a big difference from one cent per regular version copy to 33 cents to a gold foil version, um, if they are combined, the regular ver version that is, there's not lot that much of a difference. I'm gonna show you right now. Based on my calculation here, if you buy, actually this one is much more expensive now because the first time I saw a Pelicor Deceiver, like two days ago, it was just 21 cents. But right now it's already 33 cents almost. So most likely people are already buying gold foil commons. Um, but there's, it's not a lot of difference. Uh, that would be a, a 19 cents difference. So what I'm telling you is that if you buy a level 4, three Pelicor Deceiver at a 14 BCX since it's a regular foil uh, you would have to spend you only have to spend an additional 19 cents 
to get it to a gold foil version um, that fell for deceiver gold foil version at 1 bcx and why do you want it at gold foil well you can see the difference aside from the 10 percent additional reward shares you get two melee damage in this gold foil pelicor deceiver which is level three compared to a level one or even a level two pelicor deceiver so yeah that's that oh by the way um i have uh i have my own silver lineup that takes advantage of venary bonesmith as well as a hard claw or a curse wind dequest tanks in a magi necrosi of course so i will not be discussing that here because we're basically we're, we're specifically talking about common gold foils but if you want to try out that uh, death lineup for the silver modern league um i will link it in the top right uh, corner of this video so you can just click that and be directed to the other video where i talked about that death um silver lineup all right all right moving on let's talk about uh death's one mana staple card uh that would be carrion shade and uh same as the uh, pelicor deceiver this card is really good in the earthquake lineup because it has the flying ability and there's a big chance for this one to dodge your opponent's attacks as well um, usually one mana card is there to tank one attack from your opponent you know just an extra body you can slip in in cracks because it's just one mana but because it has that flying ability it has a 25 percent chance to dodge your opponent's attack which means there's a possibility that this one can even take two damage sources even three if you're super lucky uh, unlike me <laughs> um before this dr guy drops so that is a lot of utility for a one mana card especially since you want to keep it alive as long as possible while your backline is killing your opponents so yeah uh difference if you're gonna buy a carrion shade at level four uh, i mean at level three you would have to spend 21 cents and this one is about 40 cents so that's like almost 20 cents difference not a lot uh but you get all those perks that i just mentioned to you right next one is silent shavi now this is one of the more one of the stronger common death cards and last time i checked you will be saving money if you buy it at gold oil i'm gonna check right now if it's still the same no actually you will be saving more i believe um yes that is true you will be saving almost two cents <laughs> okay almost two cents because you want the silent chevy at level three at level three it gets that additional melee damage so three melee sneaker with high speed and high hp at five mana is such a strong card and if you buy it at gold foil since it's a common card despite how strong it is for a silver common card silver leveled common card um yeah it's I, I think you should really be buying it as a gold foil i mean even if you don't have it at gold foil it's really strong at just a regular foil version i mean there's no difference it's anyways moving on okay i've got lost there what i'm talking about basically is that if you have a silent shabby or if you are planning to pl planning to buy a sh silent shabby for your silver deck get it at level three uh, you can get it at level four or level five for the extra hp and the extra speed but to be honest with you i don't think it's worth um the extra spend uh you have to buy two copies of this card to and double its price obviously just to get an additional hp and you need to buy three more on top of that to get that extra speed so i don't think it's worth it but if you have the money sure why not the next one would be well my favorite common card is riftwing uh if you think because of how much i talked about silent shavi there that silent shavi is my favorite um death card uh you are mistaken my friend favorite death card uh, in the common level is actually Riftwing. I think this card is criminal on how strong it is. It doesn't have the right to be this strong as a common card. Given yes, it doesn't have the ability to attack, but that does not mean that it doesn't have the ability to win you the game by killing your opponent's cards. Because, because at level 5, which is the level that I want you to get um this card that it gets that backfire ability and what it does is that it returns two damage to any card 
that your opponent use uh, to any monster from your opponent's lineup that misses Rift Wing, okay? So probably, most likely, it's not gonna work against magic hitters, but melee and range attackers, yeah, that's 66% uh, of your opponent's potential um, damage output, right? Given it's they used an equal number. Anyways, you get my point. What I'm talking about is that because of its high speed and flying ability, there's a big chance your opponent's gonna miss. And because it starts at a really high HP and can even get to uh, higher HP at higher levels, plus that scavenger ability which gives it an additional HP each time one mon each time a monster dies, this card is a perfect tank or even a second line tank. Uh, it, it, it basically has stunned for snipers in your opponent's team. Your snipers typically are there to kill your back line, your hitters. But because your rift wing is a, on the second spot, uh, that means before your opponent can hit your man, your uh, venerary bonesmith or your life sapper or any of your ranger magic attackers at the back, they would have to hit your rift wing first. Okay. Though you would have to spend a lot more. I think this is the biggest, the more most expensive difference. Um, I could be wrong, but. Uh, I, I'm just gonna correct myself later if I see something more expensive. But right now, um, the difference is that almost a dollar and twenty-five cents. Okay. Now um, we're moving on to the life team, and the next one would be uh, Gargoyle Scrapper. So this is the one mana staple for the life team. Um, it's. Eh, I don't know. I always use it for my life team because, as what I mentioned, I have a strong life team a modern deck um it's more of a speed strat range uh deck so i'm gonna i'm just gonna link it on the top right corner so i don't have to keep talking about it in each of my life team video but if you're interested please do check it out your goya scrapper uh, like all the other one mana card you only need it at level three and because it already gets its ability at level three uh the the good thing about this card is that it's it's basically useless. Uh, it's just an extra body against your opponent's melee or range attackers, right? Because it has 2 HP. But but because of that void ability, if your opponent is using a full magic lineup, uh, yeah, there's a big chance that this card can even take 2 of your opponent's attacks. Because it has 2 HP. And if it has void and it has all of your opponent's magic attacks, if they have 2 magic attack, they will only deal 1 damage each. So that's 2 attack. Uh, that this Gorgoyah Scrapper will tank for you, okay? The difference is that uh, the difference in value is about 22 cents because I want the Gorgoyah Gra Scrapper at level 3, obviously. But I think that's not that much to spend, especially since you're getting an extra 10%. Anyways, uh, in your reward shares. Alright, moving on. The next one, uh, I haven't really used this card a lot, but I did see other people using it. Especially in Little League matches. I mean, I have my own Little League lineup. Cause, but this one, you have to use it. Uh, you have to buy two copies, okay? Because it really unlocks its silver potential once it gets to level 2. I mean, once it gets to level 4. Because it gets that extra melee damage. It doesn't have a lot of HP and armor. But if you know for sure that your opponent will not be using magic hitters, Sunkai Harvester is going to be strong. It's gonna be a strong reach attacker for you and an extra tank, okay? Um, the difference, uh, the good thing about this card is that if you buy a gold foil version compared to a level four, may, uh, level four regular foil version, even though you have to buy two Songkai Harvesters, you only have to spend an additional four or five cents, okay? I think that's the smallest difference um, out of all the cards that we've covered so far. Of course, not counting the cards that you would actually uh, save money by buying gold foils. But for all of those that you would have to spend a little bit more, this one is the cheapest, the smallest difference, okay? The next one I want to talk about is a tank. This is actually a legit tank. A Chaos Knight. Um, I've, I have a level 5 version, uh, though I can see why some people would only want it at level 3, okay? Uh, the real reason why this one is a strong tank is because of that shield ability, okay? It doesn't have a lot of HP, and you can get an additional HP at level 5, but you would have to buy 5 copies instead of just 1, 
right? So that is that is way too expensive for my taste. But 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 just to give you an idea how much it would be if you make it into a level five version instead of uh, a level three. Uh, yeah, you would have to spend almost two dollars, right? <laughs> Which is way too much uh, if we're talking about saving money. But if you were only buying it a level three because it already gets its shield ability and that extra one damage at that level, you only have to spend an additional 28 cents. So that's not bad, right? Not bad. 28 cents uh, for a tank that gets an additional damage and 10% reward shares is awesome. The next one is, yeah, this one is much more expensive uh, compared to Rift Wing when it comes to um, cost differential, but I guess it's super worth it. Uh, now, this is a niche card. That means you only use it for a specific lineup, okay? You only use it for a specific lineup because it's not that fast and it does have a lot of armor. I mean, for, and a lot of HP for a three mana card. But it doesn't have HP, so it's not gonna win you the game by attacking your opponent. It's only there to soak damage, and if you want something to soak your damage, well, that's a job of a tank, so you might as well just get a different kind of tank, right? Uh, this works because once it gets to level 5, which you have to spend 5, uh, you would have to buy 5 copies of the Goldfall version, it gets the Magic Reflect ability, okay? And that Magic Reflect ability can win you the game against Magic Attackers, for sure. If your opponent, you know for sure, is using Obsidian, you know, the Earth Magic Summoner, or Ulrich if you're in the Wild League, but, you know, we're talking about the Modern League here. Um, magic Reflect will return your opponent, the half of your opponent's magic damage uh, that the that attacks the Blinding Reflector. So, yeah, but you have to spend like an additional $1.90. So, I don't know if it's worth it. If, if you have the extra $2, why not? But it's the more expensive out of all of these cards okay um next one now these are the last two i want to talk about uh stitch leech now this one is going to be a, a must okay i think this is a must for any life lineup because at level four it gets three damage and it's a sneaker right a sneaker is super important um because it kills your opponent's backline obviously which is normally where the, your their damage is going to come from and it gets three damage how many three mana card do you see get three damage right it's not the fastest that means it's perfect for um it's perfect for reverse speed normally i actually use this in tandem with uraios and um sandworm because all of them are slow pokes but all of them are sneakers with high damage so check them out if you want to uh the difference would be almost 70 cents 60 cents but I guess that's fine if you're talking about your main damage dealer, right? Uh, the next one would be a Pelicor Conjurer. Actually, this is the last card I want to talk about. And this is actually my favorite common card from Chaos Legion uh, out of all the life splinters, right? Um, I think this is much better than the Blinding Reflector, even though they do pretty much the same thing. Because this has way, way more applications that... Um, blinding reflector and i have no idea well actually i do have an idea why blinding Lef reflector is much more expensive than pelicor conjurer mostly because of supply right because you can get pelicor conjurer for free from the rewards chest while you have to buy packs to get a blinding reflector but this one is much better one it has less it has it's it costs less mana a two mana it gets more hp yes it doesn't have the armor but its job is to dodge your opponent's attacks, right? Because you see, this card has super high speed. At level 5, where I want you to get this card. No, level 4 actually. Level 4 is good enough, but if you have the extra buck, get it at level 5. At level 4, it gets Magic Reflect. Remember what I mentioned about Blinding Reflector earlier? It gets the Magic Reflect ability, the same ability, at level 5. Which means you need to buy 5 copies of the gold foil version just to get the only thing that makes it uh, worthwhile to use. While the Magic Reflect ability of Pelicor Conjurer comes with it at level 4, you would only have to spend uh, twice of... Uh, you, would, you wouldn't even have to spend half 
of blinding reflectors cost to get a pale girl conjurer okay i don't think you even have to spend a quarter so pale girl conjurer is definitely uh the much better tank and 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 it has the flying ability as well which it gets at level one that helps it dodge more um more uh sources of damage uh, if your opponents are melee or range, your speed and your flying ability allows you to dodge those attackers. And Magic Reflect, uh, Reflect allows you to kill your opponent's magic hitters that will not will not be affected by your speed and your flying ability. So I think Pelagor Conjurer is definitely undervalued. And the only reason why it's so cheap right now is because there's a lot of them in the market. Once Chaos Re Legion... Uh, reward cards are out of print. I think this is one of the first cards that will appreciate and value. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, that is actually it for me for today. And wow, I didn't even notice that we already hit the 20 minute mark. But those are the life and death team cards that I think you should be purchasing as gold foils. And if you already have these cards leveled for silver as regular foils, um, I think it is actually a good idea to sell those regular foil cards and buy the gold foil versions instead so you can take advantage of that extra 10% reward shares and get more chests every day i hope this series has been helpful for you i have been wanting to create a gold foil series because everyone well not everyone a lot of people has been asking about it and i hope this has been helpful for you and again if you need me to if you want me to create uh to make a video about rare gold foils as well let me know in the comment section below so maybe I can I can do that too. All right. Well, that's it for me for today. Thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out. As always, the name is Chev, also known as the Furious Chicken. And I will be back with another one real soon. Bye.